Welcome back, Sebastian here. Time for my power rankings for the 2024 Hungarian Grand Prix. Uh, obviously, a Grand Prix with a lot of controversy, uh, especially about some of the team decisions. I'm looking at you, McLaren. Uh, but nonetheless, I think, you know, a good, a good chunk of data that we can kind of make some conclusions uh, and I can make some power rankings for this weekend. So, uh, number 20, I'm gonna go with Zhou Guangyu for Zhou. A uh, bit of a tricky weekend qualifying, definitely did not go as planned. It was qualified by Bottas by about half a second, I believe. And this was a track where uh, Sauber really felt that they could be at least pushing towards Q3. Not necessarily get into Q3, but at least, you know, getting into Q2 and maybe having a chance of getting in. And that's exactly what Bottas did. Joe, unfortunately for him, wasn't able to do that in qualifying. Uh, in the race was, uh, I believe, the last Class 5 finisher as well. So not able to make up positions there as well. So yeah, really tough weekend for show. Just need to grab another marker because this one's clearly not going to last. Uh, number 19, this one was a bit difficult. I think after Joe, it was really hard to find a driver who I felt had a really poor weekend start to finish. Uh, so I'm going to go with Pio Gasly. Uh, Gasly qualified dead last, uh, but that was mostly thanks to Alpine's tremendous strategy of not going out uh, to set lap time at the end of Q1 after Perez's shunt. Uh, so yeah, not really an, an indictment of Gasly's qualifying performance per se, but in the Grand Prix, just kind of trundled around and then retired with some kind of mechanical issue. So really hard to really uh, judge him any more positively than that. Uh, number 18, again, I'm kind of just not a whole lot happened, uh, at least for the bottom runners, so it's really hard to for some of these drivers. But for number 18, I'm going with Kevin Magnussen, uh, out-qualified and out-race by his teammate, uh, Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, I think out-qualified by about two tenths of a second. Uh, not, not a terrible job in qualifying in the race. Uh, I think strategy didn't really play to his advantage and he kind of just fell down the order a bit and uh, finished you know, quite, quite a bit behind his teammate, Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, number 17, I'm gonna go with Logan Sargent. Uh, for Sargent, uh, qualifying I think was definitely an improvement over some recent Grand Prix. Uh, at points it looked like he might be able to out-qualify uh, Alex Albon, unfortunately not to be. In the race itself I think had a really poor start and then from there just kind of got bogged down uh, and was basically trundling around towards the back, not really close to his teammate Alex Albon. Uh, number 16, I'm going to go with Esteban Ocon. Uh, for Ocon, out qualified and out raced his teammate Pierre Gasly. Uh, for Ocon, I believe second or third last on the road. Uh, pretty poor Grand Prix, I guess, from a performance perspective for Alpine. I think for Ocon, not a whole lot he could have really done to move up, move further up this board. Uh, number fifteen. So for Perez, uh, qualifying was a disaster. Crashing out in Q one, getting knocked out in Q one as well because of that was definitely not how this, he wanted this weekend to start. That being said, Sunday was much better uh, for Checo. Uh, had a decent recovery drive, recovered up to seventh place, which I think is realistically the best he could have done. Uh, beat George Russell as well in kind of that mini head-to-head -head, uh, between the two of them recovering through the field. Uh, so I think, you know, for Sunday, if this was just for Sunday, I think Perez would easily have been top 10. Uh, but because this is the whole weekend and because Saturday, because of how Saturday went, uh, I had to move him further down. And the reason I have him, uh, and it's precisely because of Saturday, uh, that I have him ahead of, uh, or have him behind George Russell, who I have in 14. You know, for Russell and Paris, very, very similar weekends, uh, both bad qualifyings, and then uh, recovery, or having to recover up the field. Uh, Russell, of course, finished eighth, finished behind uh, Paris. But the reason I decided to put Russell ahead is that I think the lack of performance on Saturday uh, for Russell, I think some of it can at least be explained by a uh, really poor decision making on the team's part, uh, sending him out uh, being to be the first driver on track after the red flag where it's still quite damp and then just not able to set a lap time at the end when the conditions uh, got improved quite a bit. And it kind of just left Russell out to drive. Of course, he did admit that uh, he did have some role in that not getting the good lap in. But again, I do think that those factors also played into it. Whereas with Perez, he just plain crashed. Uh, number 13, number 13, I'm going to go with Alex Albon for Albon, uh, out-qualified and out-raced his teammate Logan Sargent, uh, 
bit of a quiet Grand Prix. I think qualifying went very well as he hoped. Uh, I know in the post-race interviews, Alwan was saying that he really wished he'd gotten past uh, Alonso at the start after the first pit stop, but last night to be kind of got stuck behind uh, the Spaniard, and then that was really all uh, all that that was really the end of uh, Alwan's attempt to try to make a charge for points. So yeah, finished a little bit further down the order than he would have liked, but nonetheless, you know, not a terrible Grand Prix. Uh, number twelve. Uh, number 12, Valtteri Bottas. So for Bottas, pretty good Grand Prix, I felt. Uh, qualifying uh, went very as well as, I, as he could have hoped. Almost got himself up into Q3. Uh, in the race, the car just didn't have the pace. And Bottas fell a bit down the order, but still, it wasn't you know an absolutely terrific, horrific drive. So still, I think Bottas was one of the better drivers, especially amongst the uh, lower, uh, lower midfield teams. Uh, number 11, I'm going to go with Lance Stroll. Uh, so for Stroll, outraced his teammate Fernando Alonso, but that's really on a technicality. Uh, Stroll was basically because of team orders. Yeah, that's definitely something that came up uh, in the race quite a bit. Uh, for Stroll, team orders basically allowed him past Alonso uh, to try to attack Sonoda for ninth place. Uh, and then he was told to let Alonso pass for that final point if he wasn't able to do so, which was the case. Uh, didn't do that, so Alonso Stroll basically finished one place ahead of Alonso uh, because of that. Uh, probably should have done what Norris did and let, let his teammate pass, but you know, Stroll's going to do Stroll things. And of course, you know, it's possible that he could, thought he could have overtaken him into the final corner. We don't know. You know, I haven't heard uh, exactly what exactly happened there. Uh, but still, you know, it wasn't a terrible race by Stroll. It was pretty close to Alonso in both race and qualifying. Uh, but that's still, that's why I have him below his teammate, who of course has not shown up yet. Uh, number 10. There are actually quite a few drivers who did not finish in the points who have put in the top 10, which is usually doesn't happen that often. But uh, number 10, I'm going to go with Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, for Ricciardo, I think qualifying went okay. It qualifies his teammate Yuki Tsunoda. Uh, for the race itself, didn't go so well. Strategy, I think, really hurt him. Uh, pitted way too early for that second stop. And then I think because of that, just got stuck in dirty air uh, and wasn't able to really take advantage of I, I think what of what I think uh, the natural pace of the RB is. So I think a bit of an unfortunate result. I think you know Ricardo did pretty pretty well for himself, all things considered. All right, number nine, a uh, driver who was talked about a lot, and that is Max Verstappen. So for Verstappen, uh, qualified Q three very very close to getting pole position. But that being said, I think if uh, if you know if Norris had a second set of tires, he probably would have improved quite a bit more on that lap, so would have been a bit further away from pole. But I think you know he said going into the race that third was the best that he could have achieved, and he did not finish third. He finished fifth. And of course, had a bit of a messy Grand Prix, uh, made a couple of mistakes trying to overtake Hamilton. Of course, this is a very difficult track to overtake. Not as hard as Monaco, not as hard as Singapore, but still not an easy track to overtake. Um, and yeah. Quite a few mistakes, definitely, you know, feels like he's a bit under pressure. Not sure if it's for the te team's cha constructors championship or is it just he being frustrated with, uh, you know, the state of things at Red Bull. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, I think a pretty poor Grand Prix by Verstappen standards. You know, still beat Perez by 20 seconds, but again, you know, Perez had to recover uh, from almost the back of the grid. So that's to be expected. So, yeah, he'll definitely be hoping for more at the Belgian Grand Prix. Uh, this weekend. Uh, number eight. I decided to put, go with uh, Nico Hulkenberg. For Hulkenberg, uh, qualified and outraced his, out qualified and outraced his teammate uh, Kevin Magnussen. Thought he had a really decent Grand Prix despite the fact that he wasn't really, uh, you know, in, in any of the big battles or in, in the points in the end. Uh, I think qualifying went quite well for himself. Uh, qualified P11, almost out qualified Lewis Hamilton. Uh, and then in the race, uh, just kind of, you know, didn't, I don't think they really had the pace to beat the Astons or beat the uh, RBs. So I think based on where Hulkenberg finished, I think it was really the best that he could have achieved today. Uh, number s seven, I'm going to go with Fernando Alonso. For Alonso, qualifying I think went o okay. Uh, qualified P7 didn't really have a chance. I, I don't think the car was really there uh, to be able to uh, out-qualify the Ferraris or the Mercedes ahead. Uh, but and then in the Grand Prix had a bit of uh, I believe had a really good start got ahead of signs But then I think with the strategy uh, Just seemed like he was pitting a little bit too early in both of the two pit stops 
And I don't know if it was him struggling with tire wear or what it was, but Stroll seemed to have a much more effective strategy. Um, so if that's the case, you know, something definitely that he should look at. But nonetheless, I do feel Alonso was the better driver of the two all weekend. Unfortunately, he didn't pick up any points as a result. Uh, number six, I'm going to go with Yuki Tsunoda. Uh, for Sonoda, a decent weekend. Uh, Ill qualified, of course, by Daniel Ricciardo after he had that big crash uh, in Q3, but nonetheless, uh, the pace, the one lap pace did look pretty good before that. Uh, in the race, I think did a really good job with tire management, made, made a one-stop strategy work where pretty much everyone else was doing two stops. Uh, so yeah, definitely that uh, deserves a lot of uh, credit, uh, making the tires last, especially at this track where it can be quite uh, temperature sensitive. And uh, you know, it could have been, he could have really easily have been a sitting duck uh, towards the end of the Grand Prix on those uh, used tires on the second stint. Uh, but nonetheless did a really good job so i think p6 is a good spot for him uh number five at the top of where we go i'm gonna go with uh, carlos signs for signs out qualified his teammate charles leclerc i thought qualifying went very well uh for, for signs started the race had a really poor start got himself fell behind alonzo and then from there never really recovered uh but i think i believe finished uh six in the grand prix and at points uh, looked like challenging for staffing as well towards uh, the end of the race, but alas, uh, wasn't able to catch the Dutchman. Uh, number four, I'm going to put Carlos Sainz, or not Carlos Sainz, Charles Leclerc. Uh, for Leclerc, uh, er, beat uh, his teammate uh, Carlos Sainz in the race. I thought that went, the race was actually very, very good from Leclerc. Uh, beat uh, Verstappen as well, of course, benefiting from Verstappen's mistake, uh, trying to overtake Leclerc. Uh, Le trying to overtake Hamilton uh, towards the end of the Grand Prix. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, really, really strong race pace and uh, recovering from a bit of a difficult qualifying session. Uh, number three. Number three, I'm gonna go with uh, Lando Norris. Uh, Lando, Lando Norris had an excellent qualifying session, qualified on pole, uh, despite really only using one set of tires. Had a bit of a poor start, lost positions to both uh, Piastri and then to Verstappen, was given the position back to Verstappen because uh, race control felt that Verstappen had overtaken him off track, which I think is pretty pretty accurate. Uh, Verstappen just kind of didn't even bother. Uh, he, he Well, he deliberately changed his direction at the outside of turn one. Uh, and yeah, so for Norris got that position back, but it really felt like this was one of the first real times where in the first two stints of the race, uh, it felt like Piastri was clearly better. Uh, Piastri was able to build like four second buffers, uh, in, I believe in both uh, stints at, at, the, at the you know highest point. And yeah, for Norris, I think that's definitely something that perhaps that he needs to be concerned about. Uh, Piastri has been pretty close to dead even with him uh, in one lap pace. And if he starts getting even closer to him uh, race pace, then I think that could be bring real competition to Norris. But nonetheless, you know, it wasn't a bad Grand Prix. Could have easily won this Grand Prix if he disobeyed, uh, disobeyed team orders. Uh, but of course, you know, kind of put himself in that position, losing the position at the start uh, and not really being able, not not sure if he was not being able to or if he wasn't allowed to overtake uh, Piastri on track. Uh, number two, I'm going to go with Lewis Hamilton. Uh, for Hamilton, really, really strong drive. Uh, qualifying went okay. Uh, at points looked like he could have been uh, knocked out in Q2, but uh, yeah, just scraped into Q3, and then in Q3, uh, out qualified Leclerc as well, qualified uh, P5. So I think pretty good result uh, for Mercedes, uh, given that you know the Red Bull and the Mercedes, or the Red Bull and the McLaren, uh, were almost certainly the better cars over one lap. Uh, in the race, really, really strong, really good in defense. Uh, you know, make defending very, very cleanly from uh, Verstappen, making sure he couldn't you know overtake. And of course, you know, kind of forcing him into those into those clumsy mistakes, uh, like when he went, ran wide or when he clipped uh, Hamilton, you know, diving by dive bombing him into turn one. So really, really good uh, Grand Prix I felt for Hamilton. Uh, number one, I'm gonna go with Oscar Piastri. Uh, I think you could put Hamilton number one. You could put Norris number one. I think the top three are real pretty pretty close, uh, to be honest. Uh, for Piastri, uh, qualifying went pretty well. Uh, didn't get pole position, but still very, very close. I think only a handful of, ten, of uh, hundreds of a second uh, separate him and Norris. Uh, excellent start, took the lead off the line. First two stints of the Grand Prix, very, very good as well. Had a couple of scruffy moments that did cost him a, a second here, a second there. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we all know what happened in the final stint. 
where he, for whatever reason just couldn't, didn't have the pace that Norris did, fell six, six seconds back, uh, and then of course was kind of given the lead, given the win by Norris uh, with the team orders and all that. But still nonetheless, I think for the most part, uh, this was definitely a race where you could, I think there were several drivers who could argue for that number one spot. Um, but that being said, I think, uh, you know, I think Piastri had a very, very solid Grand Prix and, you know, number one spot uh, definitely uh, is deserving of that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, goodbye.